Hello, and thank you for tuning into Answers from the Lab, where we share Mayo Clinic knowledge and advancements on the state of testing and science from laboratory leaders and the people who are making it happen behind the scenes. I'm Dr. Bobby Pritt, the Chair of the Division of Clinical Microbiology in the Department of Laboratory Medicine and Pathology at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. With me today is Dr. Bill Maurice, the Chair of the Department of Laboratory Medicine and Pathology at Mayo Clinic and the President of Mayo Clinic Laboratories. This is our weekly discussion with Dr. Maurice in which we learn about updates in the field of laboratory medicine and pathology. Hi, Bill. Good morning. Uh, uh, good morning, Dr. Pritz. Bobby, how are you? <laughs> good. How are you? Doing well, thanks. So I thought I would talk today to you about your thoughts on vaccine breakthrough. We've been hearing a lot about it in the news. And of course, there was that recent outbreak that's been all over the news in uh, Barnstable County, Massachusetts, where most infected people were vaccinated. Um, I think that a lot of people will be concerned about this, but I think there's some important takeaway points that would be good for us to talk about. Yeah, no, I agree. It, it's, uh, it's really, it's, it's all the themes that we've touched on here over the last 14, 16 months, uh, all kind of swirled together now with, yeah. with the rising cases and the, the Delta variant and the proportion of vaccinated people and all that stuff. So yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of questions that people have. Yeah, one of the questions I've been hearing uh, from friends, colleagues, family members is, does this mean the vaccine's useless? <laughs> or, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, should we, I've should heard we not same. get the vaccine? Because you could obviously still have a bad outcome or get infected. Obviously, it's not useless, right? We know right. that the data shows that the vaccines are highly effective in preventing people from getting seriously ill from COVID, right? Mm -hmm. And I, the, the, um, and that's and that still holds true even with the Delta variant, right? With this new variant that has emerged, so so it does it does it's worthwhile getting vaccinated for that reason to prevent serious illness, and honestly going all the way back to the premise of the vaccines in the first place, and that is to really protect healthcare systems from being overwhelmed with COVID patients, right? Mm -hmm. So we know that the vaccines are over ninety percent effective in preventing serious illness, and that we are seeing now. The hospitals, in, particularly in, in hotspots in Missouri and Florida, are dealing with the, with the, with a the rise in cases, and this is really unfortunate because now these the hospitals across the country are already getting really busy with non-COVID uh, patients that were coming in that had some had deferred care during the pandemic. So, so it's it is a situation that people need to the vaccines work. They prevent you from getting seriously ill. It's not 100%. We, we knew it wasn't 100%. So the more people that get vaccinated and the more the virus is spreading, the more we'll hear about patients or individuals who've been vaccinated who get infected, so-called breakthrough, mm -hmm. um, which in some respects that nomenclature is a bit misleading because it's not really breakthrough. It's just that people will still, we knew this, that they could still get sick. So there are some differences though with Delta, which we should probably talk about compared to some of the prior strains and how, it's, how it seems to be um, impacting vaccinated people. Yeah, I agree, Bill. Um, geez, it sounds like a talk that we had, you know, months and months ago about why people should get vaccinated and that whole concern of overwhelming healthcare systems. People need to come to the hospital for many different reasons. And if you have no ICU beds because everyone's there because of COVID, well, that means that other people that are seriously ill can't get the care they need. Um, you know, you have people giving birth, uh, people that have accidents. There's all sorts of reasons people need hospital care. Um, I agree. Let's talk a little bit about the Delta variant. There have been some recent data on looking at the Delta variant and vaccine effectiveness in the United States with the vaccines we have. And we probably should mention that the vaccines we have available in the U.S. are different than the ones that may be available worldwide. So always something important to think about yep. when we're looking at the data. The vaccines we have in the United States are excellent, very good. The ones worldwide um, have variable efficacy depending on that vaccine. So let's just look at the data we have. I just saw a recent preprint showing up to 96% efficacy uh, of the vaccines against the Delta variant um, protecting against hospitalization and death. And a recent New England Journal of Medicine article showed 88% effective in preventing symptomatic illness. So they're still good against the Delta variant, despite some of the caveats we're going to be talking about. That's and, right. Yeah. And I also agree, the more people that get vaccinated, the more cases we're going to see of so-called vaccine breakthrough. Um, you know, if it's 88% effective, well, that still means that 12% will have symptomatic illness. And if that's 
12 people out of 100 that get vaccinated. Um, you could see what would happen if there were 200 people that got vaccinated, then there may be 24 people. So, you yep, know, yep. it's just the, the numbers. Exactly. And yeah. the way to think about it, so some people, and to your quote, going back to your, the original question posed to you by, by friends and neighbors and relatives about, is the vaccine useless? Well, there's been, I think about the last I heard, there were about 35,000 documented uh, COVID cases in vaccinated individuals. Uh, if you, even if it was just 80% effective, which is much more than that, uh, as mm -hmm. we know, that would be fivefold. So you would you would multiply that number by five if people had not been vaccinated of getting ill, and you then multiply that number by you know another factor, big factor to say how many of them would be seriously ill in the hospital. So so again, we have to think about what this is preventing, even though individuals might still get sick. Yeah. So let's talk about the Delta variant. I've heard some public health officials say that this has really changed our war on COVID to some extent. Um, what yep. are some of the things you've been hearing? The things that are interesting uh, about this, this variant that make it a bit different are number one, it, it appears to be highly transmissible, even compared to the original, the original flavor, the original strain, mm -hmm. uh, the founding strain of COVID. Um, for a couple of reasons, one, because it appears that the, their, the viral load is higher in the respiratory tract of this of this particular strain, and also that that individuals might be shedding for a longer period of time. Shedding, of course, in an infectious sense, meaning they they actually have live virus that they can spread. So that is what makes this more transmissible. And that was a data that was I think it was actually leaked in the Washington Post from its internal CDC communication. Um, but as inf infectious as chickenpox doesn't mean the mode of transmission because there's been a lot of debate about aerosol and is it aerosolized doesn't mean that aerosol spread is now the primary mode of transmission it just means that the patients with delta have higher loads and the other is that and this is where i think people are really getting confused too about the vaccination and masking and things is that unlike some of the prior strains including the alpha strain which is the b117 which was first identified in the uk it appears that vaccinated individuals can get high levels of of, of the delta strain of covid and be asymptomatic so that they're more apt to spread it to others than we had seen with some of the prior variants that is vaccinated individuals. You know, Bill, those are my major takeaway points too. We've already talked about the vaccine breakthrough. Basically people can be symptomatic even if they're vaccinated, they can still get COVID. Uh, and so that's one point, um, it's a rare event, but it can occur. And then if you are one of those people that's vaccinated and you get COVID, you could be shedding very high levels of virus out to everyone around you and potentially be infectious to others and yep. leads to more people in your family and your friends, your immediate colleagues uh, also getting infected. And that wasn't necessarily the case with some of the earlier variants where we saw that vaccination was somewhat protective against spreading. So I think now we're probably going to see more and more calls for masking, yep. even if you've been vaccinated, to prevent people from being carriers asymptomatically infected, but spreading to others. Yeah. And of course, for all of us, it's like, well, does this mean we're going back? Do we have to, you know, we've come so far. Mm -hmm. Do we have to wind back the clock? Um, no, not necessarily, but we just have to recognize that the situation has changed and some of the things that we were doing you know, before we might have to do again. Um, and so whether I don't, you know, because people think of the, of the most dire days with shutdowns and things like that, and we, we're not there yet. Um, so there's no reason to have conjecture. I think that there does also speak to, we talk, think a little bit about those vaccinated individuals who are getting seriously ill um, and what this means though for us. And it does appear that the, the individuals who are getting really sick uh, with COVID who have been vaccinated are people who either have a compromised immune system because of an illness like uh, cancer or because of a medication they might be taking or, or individuals that have a lot of underlying risk factors for severe COVID. So again, these are the types of people that are going to seek out healthcare, right? And so one of the reasons why we really focus on vaccination and healthcare workers is because number one, you're going to decrease. Yes, it's true. You're vaccinated. You can still spread Delta, but it's, we, it has a protective effect. And so it's going to decrease your healthcare workers risk of passing it to a patient because the patients coming for care, uh, even if they've been vaccinated, are the ones that are going to be at risk for getting more severely ill with COVID. So these are some of the things we have to start taking into the balance as we start to consider how we move into this new phase of the war on COVID, if you will. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, I agree. As healthcare workers, we're here to provide care to our patients and we want to protect the patients that we are here to serve. Um, yep. You know, one last comment I'll say too is with vaccination, um, the more people we have vaccinated, the less likely the virus is to circulate in our communities. And of course, as it infects people, it can continue to mutate. We have yep. the Delta variant now. There's been some talks of the Delta Plus, although that hasn't really been circulating yet. There's other variants that have already been described. I'd hate to see another worse variant come out that perhaps doesn't, um, our vaccines wouldn't be protective against. So the more people we get vaccinated, the less virus circulating, the less chance of more mutations. Yep, it's disheartening, I guess. I should, it's mm -hmm. probably to see this and see us having to grapple with this again. Um, you know, and, in, and to hear stories, I heard from uh, one of my Mayo colleagues about one of the major hospitals in, in North Florida, they actually had a sign out in front of the hospital saying hospital full please don't come to please go elsewhere hospital okay. and emergency room full, full please go elsewhere for for your care i mean that this is really what we need to, it is this yeah. is really it's hard it's just hardening but we still again the vaccines number one are still the best two single tool that we have to fight the pandemic is mm -hmm. it perfect no is it a good tool absolutely um and number two is that we will get through this i mean even parts of the world that like india um, and in the UK, where they saw big surges in Delta, um, it, like all the other surges, it did abate after time. So, uh, the, but the more we can do to protect ourselves, the faster that that will happen. So, so don't lose hope, um, but just be ready to kind of, we all have to be flexible here and, and uh, in doing, using the tools that we have to stop the spread of COVID. And there's still more tools on the way. I heard from our colleague, Dr. Badley, for instance, that an oral anti-COVID medication is showing some promise that might and, and that might get EUA uh, authorization, emergency use authorization. You can imagine where that would be a game changer because then patients could be treated at home for COVID mm -hmm. and not have to be in the hospital. So that we continue to work on it as a medical community as well. Excellent points, Bill. Inspiring. Uh, there is hope. Uh, still things that we need to keep in the back of our minds and precautions we need to continue to follow. Um, and we'll get through this. Absolutely. Well, thanks as always. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, who, yeah, we we still have COVID stuff to talk about here for at least a few more <laughs> few more weeks. So yeah, but, definitely. Uh, yep, and we're in a much be better place than we were back in 2020. Yeah, we are, and the thing is, is that at some point we'll be able to look look back and think about all the lessons that we've learned with COVID, and that's sure. it's quite amazing. So next week we might talk about testing because I think testing is going to testing numbers across the country had gone yeah. down. Um, I think that's also, again, there's so much confusing why we had the recommendation before that people were vaccinated who had been exposed, didn't need to get tested for COVID. Now we're recommending people get tested. It's the same thing about how people could now with this variant can be vaccinated and still have high levels of the virus. So we'll probably see some increase in testing too here coming up that we might yeah. have to talk about. I, so. would, I would anticipate that for sure. All right, All right. we'll talk about, talk to you soon then, Bill. Talk to you next week. Thank you so much for tuning in to Answers from the Lab. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to tune in every Thursday and every other Tuesday. <music>